so, so far we've had a great service, but I think it's going to get even better because we've got a, a very special guest tonight who's speaking. We have a, we have a very special guest who's speaking, and guys, I want you to give him all of your attention, just like you would me, just like you would anybody else that's up here speaking. You know, it's, it's not the easiest thing in the world, and, and many of you guys think it might be really easy to be up here and to speak, but you know, how much time, I, I don't know that you understand how much time goes into preparing something for up here. You know, and, and John has prepared something very special, you know, God laid something on his heart, and I ask you guys to give him all of your attention. I mean, we shouldn't even be able to hear a pin drop in this room when John's up here speaking. So please welcome John up. But John, God has called John to be a youth pastor someday, yes. and I believe he's going to be a youth pastor. Woo! So this, this is his very first. I, I'm assuming I think this is his very first opportunity up here in front. Uh, so, so guys, give him your attention. He might be a little bit nervous, but he needs your help. Okay. So give him all your attention. Okay. And John's going to bring the right word for, for you guys tonight from God. Amen. Give it Amen. up. young man walked into this really stuck up church where every, all the men wore sheets, all the women wore dresses, and they thought they were better than everyone else. So everyone was staring at this dude because he was wearing this raggy old t-shirt and messed up jeans, had mud and paint all over him. So as he was walking through the church trying to find a seat, he realized there were no more sheets available, so he sat down in the front row on the floor. Well, this is an amplified, which I know sometimes we do sit on the floor. So, but that wasn't such a good idea with this church because they have rules. So everyone was thinking, what is this guy doing? I mean, who sits up front on the floor of church? Well, there was this elderly usher who made his way to the front of the church. And he, he got up there, and very painfully, he made his way to the floor to sit next to this young man. Cause he was, so he wouldn't feel out of place. And the pastor said, you may not remember what my sermon is about, but I can guarantee you will never forget what you just saw. So if that old man wouldn't have been compelled by love, that yeah, young dude, um, he would have probably he needs to find a seat, you know, and since there were none, he'd have to leave, and then he'd probably be kind of ticked off, you know, he made the leave from church, it means he wouldn't believe there was Jesus, it means he wouldn't believe there was a hell. Who here knows what hell is? Anybody? Yeah. yeah. Who knows why there is a hell? Hmm? That's why he's there. Why? Why is there hell? Like, why? You know, what is it for? Yeah, for people to sin. But what a lot of people don't know is it wasn't originally made for that reason. In Matthew twenty-five forty-one, as Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, it's not literally Mount of Olives, God, like a mountain. It's not that. Just the name. So as he's sitting on the Mount of Olives, speaking to his like to his disciples, he said, "Then he'll say to those on his left, Depart from me, you workers." the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. So hell was originally made for the devil and his angels, but because we've sinned and rebelled against God, it's not just a place for them, it's a place for each and every one of us who have saved. Jesus died on the cross so we can make heaven our home, as it says in 2 Peter 3 and 9. The Lord is patient with you, not, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. So what I mean by repentance is pick up your life and do a 180. So Jesus was compelled by so much love that he suffered on the cross and went to hell for us so we didn't have to go to that horrible place of torment that Jesus described in the story, Luke 16, 23 through 24. In hell, where the rich man was in torment, he looked up and saw Father Abraham with Lazarus by his side. So he called out to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, because I'm in agony in this fire. That sucks, being able to look up at heaven and see what you missed. Like, that just sucks, that's horrible, I'm sorry. But that's the worst torment probably in hell. So in Revelation 1.18, Jesus says, I am the living one. I was dead, and behold, I'm alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys to death and hell. As Kenny comes up, I know my sermon's a little short, but it's all I got. So as Kenny comes up, I'll just be, you know, a few more minutes. So, but because of what Jesus did on the cross, we don't have to go to hell and, and have eternal suffering. Oh. We can go to hell and, be, and have eternal suffering, but we can go to heaven and be with Jesus forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I have a story before I close. He is 
ago, a pastor was ministering on the streets with a young man. The young man said to him, Pastor, I think your sermons need to be deeper. Telling me, I'd be like, okay, cool, good for you. I don't care, but that's not me. So but before the guy could even think of a response, the Lord spoke through him and said, the nails went deep in my hands on that cross, and the nails went deep in my feet on that cross. When I was hanging on that cross, the spear went deep into my side, and I went deep into the pit of hell for you. How much deeper does my message have to be? Jesus died on the cross and went through the most painful death for people who could care less about him. That's compelled by love, that people who hate him, he died for them. He died for you and he died for me. That just blows my mind. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for what you did on that cross. Thank you for coming down and just being a man and just taking our sin and dying on that cross where we should have been. Lord, I just feel that some of this touches someone here, Lord. They realize what Jesus did for them. On that cross. Amen. So Jesus gave up his right to be right on that cross. When he, he came down from heaven to earth as a man, when he was the most powerful creature in the world in heaven. But then he came down to be below nothing, just a man. Because that's how much he loves you guys. So my challenge this week is take the love that Jesus showed for you on that cross and just give it to someone that really needs it. Like that one person being bullied at school or the one person sitting by themselves at the lunch table, or someone who isn't popular at all, and they have no friends. Just take the love that Jesus showed you and show it to them. Be their friend. Talk to them. You know, just I really challenge you to do that. I know it's hard, but you have to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.